Chuck Loaf back again with the 1200 Films Podcast. All horror. All the time. And yes, in this episode, we will be discussing Crawl, and we will discuss it thoroughly. I've got some things to say. But we'll get to that later. I'll make you wait on that. Oh, boy, let's go with what we got. Um... 2008, Hyde, critic rating of 83%, fan rating of 51%, this film, I didn't think it was that great, but I couldn't stop watching, I was kind of flabbergasted at this train wreck, but it's not like in a bad way, it's kind of like... These people are crazy. It's basically Bonnie and Clyde. Then um, they go to jail. And then Bonnie gets out and then breaks out Clyde. And so they can start their murder fest again. But but Clyde is growing a conscience. And that's the film. Yep. Uh, good acting. But... Uh, Yeah, I guess it was okay. Yeah, it's okay for Desperate, I guess. Go for it. I didn't love it. Um, 2009, we got Monsterland. This is one of those anthology horror films. Just like any anthology horror film, you're going to have good bits and you're going to have bad ones. This one had more bad than good. And there is a sequel. And I'll probably watch it, and I'll probably review it on here. But that'll be for another day. Um, the, the 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 one story that it had in here about a, a maggot in the zombie's head, and it was talking to the zombie. And the guy didn't know he was a zombie. That was probably the, the best the best story. So if that sounds interesting, go ahead check it out. And that one again, I would put okay if desperate. Um. 2019 Godzilla King of the Monsters Critic rating of 41% Audience score of 83% I can see why it was that way Because it has everything we'd want In a big summer blockbuster Lots of big monsters Lots of big things happening it's, You know like a, another Jurassic Park type thing Going on here But as far as like a, a a plot or sensibility yeah that's why the, the critic score s suffered the last scene I was not impressed with I'm not exactly looking forward to the next one to be honest seriously but um this is again if you want big monsters breathing fire on each other and Refusing to die, then Godzilla's for you. Another okay if desperate. 2018 Bad Times at the El Royale. Critic rating 75%, audience score of 73%. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has this listed as a mystery suspense. What? What about all the action and violence and gore? People are getting their face half blown off. But buckshot. Jeff Bridges pops up in this as long as many other great little actors and actresses. Um, I think he kind of stole the show. If I had a stopwatch, I would bet money that Chris Hemsworth's abs had at least 20 minutes of screen time. No joke. 20 minutes he was in this film a lot in the second half and he was all pretty much with the shirt wide open say hey look at me but um still intriguing film more than just a mystery suspense <laughs> uh, then we got 2019 uncanny Annie Rotten Tomatoes does not have this listed because it's technically an episode, which is baloney. 
all of the Hulu Into the Dark series movies are considered by both IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes as episodes. They are full one and a half hour films that have been released sometimes in theaters. I don't get it. But um, uh, Uncanny Annie, IMDb gives us a 5.6 out of 10, which is about right. This uh, high schoolers are on Halloween and they're bored, so they find this board game called Uncanny Annie. And apparently it's possessed by the evil spirit of Annie. Who, uh, yeah, is not nice. So they start playing this game, and the game starts making you do bad things. And if you don't do what you're told to do, then worse things happen. This was flowing okay until, again, dumb endings. Dumb last scenes that stretch out too long, and it's like, oh, God, really? Maybe you should have made it 20 minutes less and make it an episode. It would have been better. But, um, yet another okay if desperate did I give a review on bad times at LYL did I say yeah, I, I would definitely put that one on the watch list uncanny Annie okay if desperate okay um our retro review is uh death ship from 1980 <laughs> critic rating of 20 percent audience score of 36 percent you got to be kind of lenient on these older films because, you know, a lot of them didn't have a budget and a lot of them couldn't do a lot of special effects because there wasn't, unless it was Star Wars, you didn't really have special effects back then. Um, starred George Kennedy, who many would know from the Naked Gun series as Liam Neeson's sidekick. It was nice to see him. He just recently passed away. He passed away in 2016. At the age of 91, he was active right until, pretty much until the end. But, um, <sighs> speaking of George Kennedy, his last film apparently was with Mark Wahlberg in The Gambler. Has anyone seen this film? I know nothing about that film. Anyway, what were you talking about? Death Ship. Yeah. Okay, so this, uh, luxury liner crashes or whatever and this uh this, this uh boat this skate boat of uh of several people they get off and are just floating around and they come across this ship just hanging out in the middle of nowhere so they climb aboard and apparently it is a old nazi ship with some uh Bad things happening on that ship. So they got some, some kind of ghost issues with that. And uh, I thought it was fine for what it was, for when it was made. You know, I'd watch, I don't know. I don't know if I'd watch it again, but it was fine. Again, okay if desperate. Oh, Crawl. 2019. Critic rating phenomenally at 82%. Audience score at 75%. You know, as I was watching this and I thought, um, for a little creature feature movie, it's okay. The basement annoyed me. That they were in for a good hour of the hour and a half of the film. With pipes that just block off random paths for no reason. Who has a house like this? Who has a house with a basement full of pipes that just go every which way? And apparently, a lot of people are upset about this film because apparently Florida, there is no basements. You just can't do that in Florida. There's don't have the foundation to make a basement <laughs> but this this house in Florida does and it's full of pipes and it's full of berry pepper being injured and having multiple limbs bitten off <laughs> so 
So I started looking at the, 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 the all the the reviews, and I figured I would see a lot of reviews similar to what I just said of being a nice little creature feature, you know, nice little better than nothing film. People, reputable movie reviewers, are comparing this to Jaws. That's me dropping my little microphone there. Seriously? Jaws? Jaws is one of the greatest films of all time. Steven Spielberg can hang his hat on that film and say, great film. That's one of my greatest. That maybe, you know, Schindler's List. Maybe E.T., I guess, you know. But I'm sure Jaws was, you know, one of his earlier great works. So I'm, I, but I wonder what he thinks about his film being compared to this, to crawl. But what did annoy me is about an hour and ten minutes in, it started getting silly, and I started thinking, oh no, this is an alligator version of Sharknado. That's what it was. But, um, if you want a good alligator crocodile movie, I recommend Lake Placid. That's a good little film. And there's another lesser known crocodile movie called Prime Evil, based on the true story of an African crocodile named Gustav, who <laughs> has taken approximately 300 people to their deaths. This thing is the size of a, of a 20 foot boat. This thing's huge. And it's it's very real. But um this yeah people are if this is the jaws of our generation then that's pretty sad. That tells you what's the bar has been lowered so low that this is now what we have to consider our masterpieces. But yeah, we'll see. I, I I'll bet you anything there's going to be sequels. And they'll progressively have a lower and lower budget. And they'll get progressively worse. <sighs> now it's time for our feature review. Midsommar. I invited Danny to come to Sweden. You know what she's been going through? Christian says you've got this special week planned. It's sort of a crazy festival. Special ceremonies and dressing up. That sounds fun. Unbelievable. Welcome and happy midsummer. School! What time is it? 9 p.m. That can't be right. The sky is blue. This is what 9 p.m. is like here. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you two been together? Just over three and a half years. Four years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? It's like another world. Tomorrow's a big day. Is it scary? All right, Midsommar. A lot of people have raved about this film being the best horror film. Of the year, it has a critic rating of 83%, an audience score of 63%, with a runtime of 140 minutes. It's almost as long as the newest It movie. But, um, what happens is this, uh, group of guys are planning to go to Sweden for a two month excursion, a little getaway. And the kind of the, the one of the guy has this girlfriend that he needs to dump but doesn't. And she kind of ends up tagging along. And uh, so they're going because one of the buddies is from Sweden. And he says, come check out my 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 group, my, my people. And see their customs and learn their customs and you'll, you'll find it interesting. So they do. And uh, they do have some 
mighty interesting customs. Mighty, mighty interesting customs. Um, there is a director's cut of this film, which has an additional 31 minutes. So it would be 171 minutes. If I do watch this again, I'll probably want to watch the director's cut because there were some things that I still have questions about from the version I saw. There's some doors left open, which was fine, which didn't take away. Really, it didn't. It was still a fine, fine film, which kind of plateaued, kind of reminded me. No, I won't say that. If I tell you what it reminds me, I'll give away. It'll give away the, the big, it'll give away the what's happening. But um, it reminded me of a bad film. And this kind of made that into a better, to a good film, which doesn't make sense. But I know that's my review for this. <laughs> but um, everything was good. Uh everything was great I don't know what else to say about that good grief but just uh, hang tough there are some slow parts in the beginning I don't think you realize you're watching a whore until about maybe 45 minutes to an hour in and then you realize okay it's starting to get weird yeah then it picks up but yep, definitely put that on top of the watch list. Great little film, Midsommar. And the next one, our retro review will definitely be Horror Express. Starring Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, and Tali Savales. Then Us. Then we'll be discussing several short films, horror films that I've watched recently that I would like to discuss. And we'll probably be watching Unwelcoming House 2, which from this moment that I'm recording the show is about five days away from premiering, so we'll probably, that'll be probably on the next show. Then uh, we'll discuss Body at Brighton Rock. And then on the way from Netflix is Happy Death Day to You. And also, hopefully on the way soon, is the newest Annabelle. Annabelle Comes Home, I think. So, looking forward to that. I've, I've enjoyed the Annabelle films. And speaking of all these croc and alligator movies, there's a 1980 movie called Alligator, which looks phenomenal. So I'm going to try to find that if possible. And maybe watch that here on... and review that here on a future episode. So, uh, yeah, until then, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>